In this video, I am going to continue discussing the reactions of alcohols. And in particular, I am going to first discuss the tosylation of alcohols, which is great because it makes a good leaving group, and substitution using halogen. So several different ways that we can turn a alcohol into a halogen. So for the first one, the formation of tosylates. So the alcohol groups can be weak or strong nucleophiles depending on whether it is protonated or not. Alcohols can be used to make electrophiles by further protonating them to this so that we can have a water leaving group. And so that makes it a leaving group. So however, this requires very acidic conditions. So alcohols are not great bases, and so if you want to protonate them, it needs to be a very acidic condition. And this restricts what can be used as a nucleophile against the electrophilic carbon bound to the alcohol, because a lot of times these nucleophiles are going to prefer to just react with the hydrogen ions that are in solution rather than with the electrophile that we're interested in. And so to make the alcohol a good leaving group without needing those acidic conditions, we can can tosylate it. And so what we're talking about is tosic acid or oftentimes tosyl chloride. And what we will then form is we will bring in our alcohol right here and form this tosylate ester. So when we tosylate something, we are putting this large group on. It has this sulfur. So it has this sulfate group on it right here. And so we are putting our alcohol onto that and that will turn it into a good leaving group. And that's because we can see on here that there is a lot of resonance stabilization. And so the mechanism for this is we bring in our alcohol right here. It will attack the sulfur on here. The electrons will move up onto this oxygen right here. When the oxygens collapse back down, we are removing this chloride right here so that we end up with this right here. Then we can bring in this pyridine right here and that will deprotonate this oxygen. And so we end up with our tosyl ester right here. We can look at it like this. So we have our alcohol coming in. It attacks right there. This chlorine will leave. So we have our tosyl ester. Then we bring in our nucleophile. And so this is using the tosylate ester as our leaving group. So this will come in, attack that carbon right there. This will have the electrons go to the oxygen. And so now we have generated this new product here. And this is with inversion since this right here is an SN two reaction. So we get that inversion there. Then the tosylate ion, which is resonance stabilized, will leave. And so we could use something like iodide here as our nucleophile. We have the tosylate ester break off so that we have the tosylate ion leaving in this SN2 reaction. And so we get the inversion. So we're going from the S to the R stereochemistry on here. And this shows the resonance stabilization that we get on the anion leaving group. And these are just some of the reactions that we can do with the tosylate esters. So we have right here on this side all our tosylate esters and we can use a hydroxide or a cyanide, halides, alkoxides, ammonia, or our lithium aluminum hydride. And so we can do the SN2 reaction on that where our tosylate ions are the leaving groups here. So like I said, the tosylation makes the alcohol into a good leaving group so that we can do other chemistry with it. And so the other thing I'm going to discuss here, so reactions of alcohols, and we are going to talk about halogenating these. And so one way we can do this is with hydrohalic acids. So we have the electrons here, grab this hydrogen right there so that we end up with a water leaving group. Then we can have this come back around over here attack that, these electrons move onto the oxygen. And so now we have halogenated our R group there and we have water as the leaving group. And this will occur as SN1 on tertiary carbons, SN2 on primary, possibly a mix of the two on secondary, depending on other conditions that we are thinking about. So chloride ions are weaker nucleophiles than bromide because it's smaller and less polarizable. So if we want to do chlorine, we often use an additional Lewis acid. So this zinc chloride here, which is sometimes necessary to promote reaction with HCl, 
with primary and secondary alcohols. So the zinc chloride coordinates with the oxygen of the alcohol in the same way that a proton does, except that the zinc chloride coordinates more strongly. And so we have this HCl and the zinc chloride, which is called the Lucas reagent. And so the mechanism for this, we have our alcohol here. This will come up and attack that so that we get this complex right here where we see we have the positive charge on the oxygen there. So this can then leave in an SN1 type reaction. So we get a carbocation, then the chloride can come in and bond with that carbocation right there. And so we end up with this chlorinated species right here. And this has left with the alcohol group right there. We can do this with a primary alcohol as well. So again, this will come up and attack that. We get this coordination here. This chloride will come and attack right there. This will leave. And so this is happening as an SN2 reaction right here. So we now have this primary halide right here. And depending on what type of alcohol this is, it will happen at different rates. And so we can use the Lucas test using the Lucas reagent on an unknown alcohol and watch for the second phase to separate. Because when we change from an alcohol to a halide, it becomes less polar. And so therefore, if our reaction is happening in water, which is what it will be happening in because the zinc chloride is polar, then you will see a phase separation as the alcohol is turned into an alkyl halide, which is less polar. So after reacting, like I said, the nonpolar alkyl halide separates into a different phase, and the relative rates of separation indicates whether it's primary, secondary, or tertiary where a primary will take greater than six minutes to occur. A tertiary is going to happen a lot faster than the secondary will be somewhere in between there. And so some limitations of this reaction here is that it has poor yields of alkyl chlorides from primary and secondary alcohols. So even with the zinc chloride present, reactions of HCl with the primary and secondary alcohols can be slow. We also get a lot of eliminations because we're heating the alcohol in concentrated HCl or HBr, and this can lead to eliminations. We can also get a lot of rearrangements. So if we're forming that carbocation, we can get hydride and alkyl shifts to those carbocations, and so those are always prone to rearrangements. And we have limited ability to make alkyl iodides. So many alcohols do not react with HI to give the acceptable yields of alkyl iodides. So another way we can do this is with reactions of phosphorus halides. So something that looks like this right here. So we have a phosphorus with three halides on it. We can have our alcohol come in. This will attack that. One of these will break off. We'll get an inversion of the other two so that we get a species that looks like this. This is a good leaving group, so we can have this bromide come in and attack there. That breaks off right there, and so we have now brominated our R group right here, and this is our leaving group right there. So again, we're doing another SN2 reaction on here. Another way we can do this is with thionyl chloride, so that's SOCl2, and this is often the best reagent for converting an alcohol to an alkyl chloride. So remember above with the Lucas reagent, we would get poor yields of it and we can get a lot of side reactions. So this is often one of the best ones to use if we want an alkyl chloride. So the byproducts are gaseous SO2 and HCl. And what that does is because of the Le Chatelier's principle, if those are leaving the reaction as gas, this prevents the reverse reaction from occurring. And so that means we can push the reaction towards products on here. So we have this, this is our thionyl chloride right here. We have the alcohol come and attack right there. These electrons move onto the oxygen right there. So we end up with this as a leaving group. We then have these electrons move back down here. The electrons from here will go and grab that hydrogen. These electrons move back down here. And so we end up with this as an intermediate. The HCl leaves as a gas. Then we bring this species right here down here. And I've kind of 
bent some of the bonds around a little bit just to show better what is actually occurring here. And so if it's on a secondary or tertiary carbocation, then we get intermediates like this since we can have that stable carbocation. And so what will happen is we can have the electrons from this bond move over here. And so this comes off as a positively charged R group. And we can have the electrons then come off right here onto the chloride. So that leaves as this negatively charged chloride right here. Then we can just have this negatively charged chloride go and bond to that R group there. Otherwise, what we can have is instead of having the electrons move down to the sulfur, we can just have these electrons move over there, and then these ones will move down right there in a concerted reaction there. And so that is if it's on a primary alcohol. And so we still end up with these same products right here. So we have our chlorinated alkyl group right there and we have our gaseous SO2 there that will leave and prevent that reverse reaction. And so when we are trying to halogenate our alcohols, these are the strategies that we can use. So for primary, for the chloride, we want to use the thionyl chloride. For the bromine, we want to use the PBr3 or we can use the HBr. And for iodine, we would want to use something like this, which I didn't actually talk about in this video. So for secondary, we again want to use our thionyl chloride or we want to use our PBr3. And for tertiary, we can use HCl or HBr for the chlorine and bromine, but we can then also use the HI because we will get better yields there. But anyway, that was everything I wanted to talk about in this video. I hope you found that helpful and I will see you in the next one.